welcome back. It's great to see you here. This video is going to be part one of two videos in which I discuss the trends that are always going to be timeless for me and seem to evolve with my style over the years. I'm going to do it in the form of this video being a 2024 wish list with pieces that I want that will just keep my style growing in the way that it always tends to go, the world that I kind of exist within when it comes to fashion and things like that. It's mostly going to be a whole showing of my Depop likes which have kind of stayed consistent with their own theme throughout the years so it could be cool to look at all of my Depop likes and put them together in the world that they all belong in. The part two video is going to be my 2023 favorites that have informed what I want to continue with in 2024. I hope Hope you enjoy and let's get into it. I'm going to start with the vintage All Saints belt that has historically displayed Jesus rocks, Glastonbury rocks, or other British and American cities rocks. I recently discovered this belt through the picture of Kate Moss at Glastonbury and I hadn't realized that it was All Saints at the time but I started to dive more into the brand and realize who they were, where they came from, and how they actually were one of the pioneering brands of the British indie sleaze indie rock movement subculture. In particular, I really wanted this belt that says Manchester Rocks on it because Manchester is a city that a lot of my like biggest memories and milestones in life happened in and just having that as well as being able to celebrate Manchester's music history at the same time is really cool to me. And what's also really cool is that one of the commenters on my 2024 trends video actually told me that the Jesus Rocks belt was the first and most widely distributed belt at the time and that's where it all like stemmed from and just knowing that bit of history was really cool. I wanted to do a little bit more research on All Saints in preparation for this video so I looked up a Vogue article and I thought the title was really interesting because it was a, the birth of a cult, your introduction to British brand All Saints, and I think that was very telling of where it was directed in terms of that subculture, indie sleaze. Because they're a high-end brand, it is interesting that they are associated with this sub subculture, because usually subculture is DIY, but I guess the same could be said about Vivian Westwood and maybe Jean-Paul Gaultier. I also read in the Vogue article that their marketing strategy was focused on word of mouth rather than any campaigns, which makes sense for their brand because I think word of mouth is usually the best marketing strategy for a subculture. It's more of like an inner circle kind of talking about it rather than a display, telling people what it is. People seek it out and that's what kind of keeps it underground as well even though it is a high-end brand. So it's really interesting. It's because the other video that I mentioned this belt in did pretty well. I went on Depop and snatched this belt up before it could be discovered because I really needed it and it was like the only one that I ever saw. So I ended up buying the Manchester Rocks belt and I'm so excited for it to arrive. The next thing on my list are Miss 60 or Diesel boxing boots. I think these two brands have made my favorite silhouettes of the viral boxing boot. I know that Adidas and Puma have a bunch and I actually just shot the Puma X Fenty huge like up to the thigh boxing boots that I'm going to show in these images but my favorite is the Miss 60 and the Diesel ones. So the Miss 60 ones I found through Suzy Lola and then in this photo she's wearing the pink and white colorway. These I'm going to find the other colorways so that I can... Uh, okay. They also come in black and white, which is, I think the pink and white and the black and white are the most expensive ones on the resale market at the moment, so the black and white ones would have been perfect because they're so neutral and would go with every outfit, but no, they're like $400. And then there are also the metallic ones. It's either silver and gold or gold and black, and I ended up getting the gold and black ones because... Yeah, they seem to be in the best quality on Depop and also just the lower price point, so I'm excited because even those kind of feel like a neutral because they're mostly black. I'm glad I didn't get the silver and gold ones because they don't act as versatile as the black and gold with outfits. And then I love these silhouettes of the diesel boots. I don't know, I think it's just their like compact, like sleek element to them. They kind of, if you cut off like the boot part, kind of remind me of like the skinny shoes that are going around. Adidas Sambos were the popular skinny shoe, but they're being replaced, I think, by A6 and Onitsuka Tiger more so. I know there's a lot of like little Prada, like metallic 
sneakers. They're just very like small. I think it's the roundness, the fact that they're not platformed in any way, and they kind of remind me of hiking shoes. But anyway, I also just love the colorways of these, like black and yellow, but this soft pale like banana yellow is so nice. Like I just love these. And the orange ones. I don't love orange all the time, but I'm always drawn to these orange ones, but they're so expensive. They're like $400. So of course I did go with Miss 60, which I'm happy about, but yeah, these diesel ones are probably not possible. Diesel also make them with laces on the side of the boot, which I think is so creative because yeah, like who is having boots with like laces all up the side. I don't know. I just love that detail. I love like when a classic silhouette is transformed just by an element like laces up the side. Just something unexpected. I love that. There's also a seller online named Darina and she has an account on Instagram called Diesel Slave and a website where she has tons of boxing boots. Either they're vintage or just historic. She has a lot of diesel, Adidas. Um, what else? Yeah, and these Puma X Fenty ones that I actually just shot the white version of for a photo shoot a few days ago. If this colorway wasn't sold out, the Peachy Den Deborah Midi skirt would also be in my wish list because I think this is a beautiful canvas, just like combination of tech wear and femininity that I love. And the dip in the waist and the big like waistband is beautiful to me. Someone at work has them and we're only allowed to wear like a long black skirt or black pants and so she gets to just like slay in the skirt and I'm like oh I love it I wish it was still available. But in lieu of that I found tons of elevated basic skirts that I have saved so I'm gonna go through all these like River Island is a good vintage brand. I think it's also in a stretch fabric, which I found to be very, very flattering. More intrigued by it now than I ever have been. And I'll go into that later because there's another type of skirt that I want to talk about here. Comme des Garcons is really good for the elevated basics. I think that they have a lot of shirts, jackets as well, and skirts and pants that have like really sculptural elements. I think that the Japanese designers really focus on sculpture rather than straight up flattering silhouettes, although they are really good at making the silhouettes flattering. But I really love the artistic and architectural elements that they put into their pieces. So this skirt is a bit of like a parachute skirt. I love that. I just love the way that it cuts in the middle. Not middle, but at that two-thirds mark. And it just becomes something different. It's still cohesive to the whole thing. This one is really interesting. I think this is where it plays more with sculptural elements. I just find that design, that kind of like coat hanger stuffed in like wire, metal, really interesting. Yoji Yamamoto. And then here's some more. We have Vintage Mango. I think all of the little buttons are really interesting and the flaps and the waistband itself. I like this Balenciaga skirt. I don't really like current Balenciaga, but this vintage one with the giant pockets is really cool to me. Love the shape here. This Prada skirt, another with the like two thirds separation. I like this Marie Francoise Jabot skirt, and I think this brand is also a very big inspiration for more sculptural skirts as well as Japanese designers because I think that a lot of the current parachute skirts are being inspired by Marie Francoise Jabot. They had a lot of those. Love the back where it kind of pulls in and the detail is at the back instead of all the stuff at the front. It's pretty cool to me and also enhances the overall wearability and flatteringness of the piece. Yep. Parasuko, I think that's a popular like early 2000s um, vintage brand. Yeah, this skirt is really cool. Cash. I see this a lot in Bloomingdale's like currently, but this vintage skirt is really cool because of all of the different stripes and how they... I think it's cool because it's black, so they're very subtle, but all the stripes like go into each other. And I think that works the best because it's black. Then we have this Burberry parachute skirt, so pretty. This is another stretch fabric. I think the ruching is really interesting. Lawrence Steele, Cop Copin. This is another brand that's very popular for their asymmetry and sculptural skirts. Very similarly to that, I want to enhance my wardrobe with more elevated basic tops. I think that 
stretch fabric is really great at the moment for this because it creates a slinkiness, just a very nice sexiness to a regular basic top. In terms of the trend cycle, the t-shirt used to be everyone's favorite throw-on cotton like soft top that they just run out the door in and still look put together because there were a lot of nicely shaped boxy enough cut elevatedly t-shirts but now that trend is being replaced by more feminine and less neutral silhouettes ones that have like spaghetti straps and just off the shoulder asymmetry slinkier fits stuff like that so in terms of smaller brands what comes to mind for me is peachy den's kylie collection because these tops are just so like buttery just slinky soft and they just drape amazingly and they also come with a hood there's like a jumpsuit version where that same fabric is seen all throughout and just creates that beautiful soft gripping and shaping on the body and it also can be worn on both shoulders on one shoulder off the shoulder and i think that's another element that makes people want more tops like this as opposed to t-shirts because they can mix and match what they wear it to special occasion um casual it's very versatile and that's why people like it a lot right now. The same way on Depop I've saved a whole bunch of shirts that I find similar to this in effect just because they're something we've seen before but taken to the next level, just elevated a little bit. I think having a collection of elevated basics is great because you can literally just have a collection of tops that you throw on effortlessly and then you can still walk out the door feeling perfectly put together. I love this vintage green turtleneck because look at how the waistband can be altered in a way like you can change it to whatever symmetry asymmetry you want this nice off the shoulder vintage top i love blouses from vintage express as well they just like that kind of long silhouette that people like i think at the moment people are drawn to like a longer dropped waist so that it can flow with a skirt or a pair of pants very nicely and yeah, the ruching on this is really nice. A lot of small designers are coming up with ruching as well. I think the added belt on this top is really nice. Love that detail. This I'm going to consider basic, even though would we consider silver basic? I think I would because it's just a solid color. It's still pretty neutral, but it does stand out in that elevated way. Another Comme des Garçons elevated basic. Just see how this is very flattering, but also creates a sculptural shape. The shoulders are so amazing, asymmetric, but differently proportioned, but still overall super flattering. This undercover sweatshirt with that line across here, I think that's really cool. More River Island. This top has that great slinky stretch material that works really nicely on the body. DKMY, another longer top. I love the material of it. I think material also goes a long way with elevated basics. I love this satin and I also love the asymmetry on it. This reminds me of the Kylie top just because of the placement of this little gather right here and also the fact that it can be stretched around however you want and that material. I love this top from Vintage Anthropology. Another basic, but also silver, so it looks a little bit elevated. I think that this material won't wrinkle as easily as most materials would, so that's cool too. This Vintage Guest Blouse, this Prada, I love the Gather. Another basic silver. And another one, this is Diesel, love the hood attached to it. And how liquidy and buttery this material looks on the mannequin. This Jill Sander top, this is another brand that focuses on, you know, everyone says minimalism for Jill Sander, but I think that the elevated basic is not so much minimalism. I think there's a lot of thought that goes into it. And the purpose of these pieces are to elevate a simple outfit rather than keep it understated and minimal. This is a nice shirt with that same kind of middle point gather. Issey Miyake, another brand that focuses on sculpture and texture and how the pieces interact with the body. Another long express tank, asymmetrical. This is beautiful. I like this Depop seller, the Gallery Girls, because they sell a lot of Italian vintage and really high-end beautiful vintage pieces. Another MFG shirt, same idea as the Express but more high-end. 
love the asymmetry on this red shirt. This is really cool. I'd still consider this an elevated basic even though it's got all those strings hanging just because it's that overall color. Brought up just a little bit more interesting with those details. Love this Yoji Yamamoto jacket and this shirt as well. These pockets are such an interesting idea for a top. And Jean-Paul Gaultier, Vivian Westwood. Love these ruffles. Armani, that reminds me of the River Island top, especially with the bat wings. That can be kind of hidden based on how you hold the material together. And this Comedy Garcon t-shirt. Love the polka dots and how they're not like white on black. They're just kind of raised. And I think that's really cool, subtle. And another Comme des Garcons shirt, Helmet Lang, another Comme des Garcons. I think that the waistband on this is kind of made to look cut up, which is really cool. Instead of putting it straight across and making it super symmetrical, they kind of cut it asymmetrically and just haphazardly and created that intrigue in such an understated way. I have two tops that I would consider elevated basics just because they're plain neutral but also have some interesting element to them. The first one is this Isimiyaki top and it's from their Pleats Please collection. I love that it's grey but it has these hints of darker grey. It's actually like a grey blue but I love like the ombre and like texture and the pattern of it. So that in itself is pretty elevated and also the shape of it in general. I recently saw a TikTok where someone was talking about how please please is not flattering and that erupted in a bunch of responses on how the point is to not be conventionally flattering but because this line focuses on how the pleats move in the wind and form in different ways on different people and different environments and it's kind of more of an exploration of the world through whoever is wearing it so that is really cool to me and I would say that is one of the reasons that I love this shirt because I love the artistic process behind it and I think that that is the reason to love fashion. My other elevated basic is this Prada sport vest and I would say it's an elevated basic to me based on the way that it fits like it kind of cinches in a way and it's also a really interesting material. It is to me like a very normal shirt but at the same time I don't think that this shape and style is something that I'd find in like a normal closet of like my t-shirts or something. I, I can wear it in multiple ways as well. Sometimes I've worn it flipped and had the zip up here so that it's kind of like an open vest situation so that also the fact that I can play with it a lot makes it an elevated piece to me. And yeah. Maybe not as much as a story as the Isimaki top, but still a put together piece that can just be thrown on. Next I wanted to talk about riding boots, which I find to be a very interesting trend to have resurfaced considering it was very popular 10 years ago but seemed to disappear. I think a lot of the boot trends have stayed pretty steady throughout and this was an interesting one for me because it like completely left the market and now it's all of a sudden very much back. It started because Mew Mew released their big buckle moto boot and a bunch of brands including Steve Madden copied that silhouette. Mew Mew has been interesting because for two years in a row it's been List Insights number one brand of the year in terms of starting all of the trends and having people follow that exact silhouette that they produce. I think that some of the most prominent trends out there at the moment have been started by Mew Mew. I'm interested in this trend because of the actual timelessness of it, even though it has jumped from 10 years ago to now. I am actually so shocked that such a timeless boot has taken such a long break. These are the ones that I've saved on Depop because I know the Mew Mew one and is completely out of possibility at $2,000 and I wouldn't really want the copy of Steve Madden. So these Vince Camuto boots I think are kind of almost what I'd be going for in a boot but they're still very nice. I also like these, these like dead stock boots. I don't know the brand of them but this seller Mayway sells a bunch of them. They have a little bit of a buckle rather than a coverage of buckles around the whole thing 
but I think it's really cool, especially the colorway as well. They kind of remind me of like silver boxing boots and another one of the boxing boot looking moto boots. Roberto Cavalli with the buckles around the bottom and the buttons, just the spiker boot. I like these rag and bone boots. I think they're also kind of not what I'm going for because they're a bit more western, but I do love these. Carlo Pasolini. I love these ones. I wish they weren't so distressed and ruined because these are really beautiful. Love the rhinestone polka dots as well. These ones I found really interesting. I really do love these ones. They remind me of New Rocks but in a very skinnier way. I feel like New Rocks would be hard for me just because they're so chunky and I'm so short. Um, these Harley Davidson ones are really nice. Kind of between the combat boot and the moto boot. I love the shape of this and I think that I would love these in black. I love how slouchy they are and how structured they are at the same time. These are really beautiful, another more boxing boot looking one. These kind of remind me of the combat boots that I used to wear rather than buckle riding boots. But these are Juicy Couture. I'm obsessed with these Miss 60 ones. These are definitely more of a motorcycle boot, but I think that they can also be a boxing boot category. These are beautiful. These vintage Italian boots. And these are really cool to me. They're kind of like cyberpunk space movie vibes. And I found these ones on Pinterest and I thought they were stunning. Like, oh my god. Next, I'm looking to expand a collection of kitten heels because there are so many interesting silhouettes of kitten heels out there other than the plain ones that I've been accustomed to. I think that people are getting more creative with them, putting sporty patterns on them, and I just love it. So I went on Pinterest to find interesting ones, interesting ways that people have styled them. So I'm gonna just put those Pinterest images here. I love all of these. I love these Melissa Y Project shoes, these different silhouettes, the way people style them, the lacing, the buckles, also these viral Mew Mew ones are beautiful. I do have two pairs at the moment. I have these beautiful pink ones and I also have these red ones. I wear these ones more frequently because they're my size and my trick with these is to put a string around the middle because my foot will just fall out of the back every time but with the string they're actually really easy to walk in. This next piece are cotton and knitted skirts, some with stretch fabric and just overall a sexy form-fitting piece that hugs the body but still has fun character to it because a lot of these are sporty as well. I've seen them referred to as a puff ball skirt as well but I think that's just when they have like a tassel and usually that comes in like two-piece knit sets but I love all of these that I've saved on Depop. This is less of a knit and more of a stretch fabric. Christian Dior. But you see what I mean? It would just hug the body in such a beautiful way. I have fallen more in love with stretch fabric just because it's not cheap looking as I used to think depending on where you get it. Like what kind of piece it is. It could easily be a cheap piece because I think of t-shirts, I think of like t-shirt dresses and just stuff like that and I've always found it to be cheap but I'm starting to be more open-minded about that and seeing how it does have a beautiful function for flattering silhouettes. I love this wet seal one. This is more of the sporty silhouette. This pinky one is so beautiful. I think this is more of a puff ball, but I love the way that the ribbing and the waistband is presented. This is a beautiful Italian vintage one. This one's Converse, which is really interesting. I have to look into this more, but I didn't realize that vintage Converse also made clothes. This is Chloe. This is more of a, a towel material, which is super interesting. This is another more sporty vintage piece. I would call this one a puff ball skirt, but maybe it's not just because it's just a drawstring. I love this one. This one's so beautiful. I love the cargo pockets, even though it's all soft fabric. This is beautiful. Miss 60, Vivian Westwood. They did a lot of these with nice big pockets and beautiful waistband and beautiful hemline details. This is beautiful. This is also Miss 60. I love the playfulness of adding the illusion of a skirt on top of it as well. I think that's really cool when brands do that. Another sporty one and this Miss 60 one as well. This is cool because it adds that denim element as well. And then this Jane Marple Return to Forever bow skirt which would be really great now as bows are really in. I recently got my own Italian vintage puffball cotton knitwear skirt. I'm going to show that right now. This is Vintage Diesel and I also got it from the Gallery Girls, that Depop I mentioned before. This is so beautiful. I've never had like a nice big bright pink skirt before. 
this waistband is so nice it like sits perfectly wherever I want it to sit it's got like a side slit but yeah it's just such a flattering piece to wear in terms of hugging and shaping and just looking really elevated as well. I love the parachute skirt and the parachute dress because I think that they're the better peplum. I think that the point of the peplum and just that outer poof is to give the silhouette some more shape. It's the flattering playfulness to it and I think that this is a more beautiful version and more creative version than just the peplum. So as I said before, Marie Francois Gerbeau did a lot of these parachute skirts in their dress and skirt silhouettes. And a lot of the current designers, including of Planet Earth and Peachy Den, are doing their own versions of the parachute silhouette. And I'm going to show you some of my Depop likes because I have tons of these on here as well. So as usual, I love this Montclair dress. So stunning how it's just this poofy canvas situation. This is beautiful Versace. I love this. This is one of the MFG ones. It's a whole dress and this one reminds me of that but it also reminds me of a cross between MFG and Reformation because of the polka dot. MFG again. Look at these beautiful details, beautiful fabrics being used. Armani. This is the brand only. This denim one is really interesting. I just love it. It's so playful. Another MFG. Another one. This one's more of like a cottony stretch fabric and it's just so beautiful, so slinky. And another one, Cop Capine did a few of their own. These two I really love. I love the pinstripe especially. I think that's so creative, but kind of like a suit played up a bit in a more fun way. And this MFG jacket is really interesting because it kind of brings me the dress vibe, especially with like the dress over the pants. So I'm also in the market for a new wallet and I have not had a wallet in years so I've just been using random pouches and bags but my favorite wallet that I've been seeing on Depop is the Mew Mew one because it has this beautiful weaving and I'm just super drawn to it so I've been trying to find the perfect one that I like from Depop. Here's a couple that I've saved. I just love the colors. This weaving pattern is just so gorgeous and... Another staple for these like vintage looking wallets is Vivian Westwood. They have tons and tons of different patterns on them, different styles. They're just so stunning. I don't know why, but I'm not exactly drawn to the Vivian Westwood, but I know that there is one for everyone because of how many styles they made. I also love that some of these wallets that I've been seeing on Depop have a section of like little hooks that you can hang your keys from. I think that's really cool. So this one I found from Mew Mew. I need that too because I be losing my keys all the time and just having a little hanger for them would just be amazing and it's just so cute look it's like a little I just love that a little tiny light clip another thing that's like a staple that I'm in the market for as well as a wallet is a nice slouchy 90s 2000s bag where I can keep everything into a bottomless pit and still be compact for going out because I want to bring cameras just essentials just a whole bunch of stuff and it's the perfect bag to fit absolutely everything I've always had these tiny bags that I just cannot put everything into, or these big tote bags that's just too much volume. But this is the perfect, the perfect shape just for how like they shape to fit everything. Not really, they don't form out of your objects, but they're just such a big slouchy, like yes, but also so small. Gina George and Lucy is a great brand all over Depop for this kind of thing. I think they're a little bit bigger than I'm going for, but they're still like the kind of beautiful leathery hardware indulgent piece that I love. So I'm also going to do my Depop likes for these. I love this Isabella Fiore designer one. It is so beautiful, like the weaving, the buttons, the labels, like the leather, is so beautiful. Diesel has a lot of amazing bags like this. I love this yellow one. This is like similar to the yellow in the shoes. I just love that shade. This is a regular early 2000s bag. Another one. Love the silver. This one is also just like a vintage one. The ribbon weaving from the straps is so beautiful. Love this diesel one. This is just a pile of diesel ones that I found. They're all so beautiful. So much variety in the shape and everything. So nice. This next thing on my wish list I already have because I just bought it a few weeks ago, but this is going to be my trend prediction. I feel like it is in the direction that we're all going. Some people are predicting sailor hats and I talked about that in my 2024 trends because that's like a punk juxtaposition of like a classic shape, like you'd think sailor, but it's more like Vivian Westwood, Jean-Paul Gaultier punk. My prediction is for this hat, the British flat cap. Hold on, it looks small until I put it on. 
it's so stunning to come back because it's perfect like British indie sleaze is so popular right now this is perfect people are also talking about the trend eclectic grandpa which is like all these grandpa looking pieces but are paired with more just fun like younger silhouettes like indie sleaze or even less sexy than that so my main inspiration was also this outfit that Susie Lola wore because she had an adidas flat cap and the one that I just showed is adidas Y3 collaboration that I got on eBay. I just saw that the way that she combined this and also the ugly ugly shoe boxing boots into this beautiful sexy silhouette was just amazing to me so it inspired me to think more into that and I love it. It's because I love England's impact on fashion so it makes sense for me. The next one is the tool belt slash like the belt that Paloma Wool is making, that suede pocket belt that everyone is loving at the moment. I've never really been into suede, but it's kind of growing on me. I won't say it's completely grown on me, but seeing it in this tool belt form is really cool. I've seen this seller on Depop post a lot of these beautiful boho tool belts and I'm just loving it. I love more of like the leather ones but the suede ones and the way that they're constructed are really pulling me in and then of course you have the paloma wool styles that everyone has been seeing over and over again my next want is a leather moto two-piece set inspired by Miu Miu again when they released these that I'm going to show, I just fell in love with them. They're just so beautiful. The way that the leather looks so beautiful with its construction, its dyeing, its elevation, and the way that they pair it with these beautiful like feminine satin waistbands with the bloomers underneath and just this, the argyle sweaters, it's beautiful to me. And of course the Bayonetta Mew Mew glosses. All of that together is so stunning. I've also never had a jacket with that little popper that can be left open and show the outfit. I've always loved that silhouette. My next one is something that I call muddy washed jeans, which is kind of that slouchy, grungy, early 2000s jean that's kind of got this green-brown wash in the blue of the jean material. But whenever I see people wearing this kind of jean, I think, oh my god, they look so put together, so elevated, and also so grungy at the same time. Like, it seems so high fashion while being so effortless at the same time. It's definitely not a current trend. I think that it's kind of been around for a while. It's very influenced by 90s and 2000s, so a steady kind of growth from there. Some examples are diesel jeans. I found a bunch from the seller on Depop Grey Room Shop. You see they have that slouchy element, that beautiful like acid wash that's kind of just grungy and messy and muddy and I love it. So that same seller on Depop, Grey Room Shop, is going to influence the next thing on my list which is the Adidas Vintage Zip Up because they sell so many but it's mostly the way that they style it. The way that they style it with an elevated skirt underneath is so stunning and I think this transforms in my eyes how I look at a track jacket because I've always seen it as just like, okay, you just throw it on. It's like kind of ugly but with this skirt involved it's actually really beautiful. Similarly to a pop of red, I want to include a pop of metallic in which chrome, silver, gold are used in the same way that red has been styled this previous autumn. I think that my favorite way of seeing silver is when it's an accessory, a shoe, a bag, sometimes a jacket, but just a little piece that is just added to an overall outfit. Red, I feel like, was more color blocking because most of the red pieces that we saw with that trend were soft fabric, just typical clothing material, like cotton or polyester or something like that. We do have the leather bags and stuff, but they don't change the material as much as metallic colors do. They have a different sheen altogether that comes from just a more plasticky material being used for them, and it gives the outfit an extra texture rather than just an extra color. They pop in similar ways, but this just adds another bit of intrigue. I pulled out some images from Pinterest to show how the silver kind of adds to the overall outfit. Uh, most of these are kind of grunge. I took them from the two Pinterest albums I have right now, which one of them is Indie Sleaze and the other one is Cozy Fashion, just incorporating all of the current 90s minimalist trends. These ones are more grunge Indie Sleaze 
love the bag and also the rhinestones on the pants like I don't think that is something that you could do with a pop of red I think that's very unique to chrome and silver the next one this silver bra is really really cool I love layering like a bra over a shirt and I think that the materials of the shirt underneath even though there is a very chunky polo work really well because there is that layered sheer on top. This is like a very classic image I see everyone pull whenever they talk about grunge and indie sleaze or like Y2K and these pants are so beautiful. Capris are very in at the moment as well and the slimmer pant is becoming more popular in fashion. This one was from my cozy fashion Pinterest folder. Love this parachute dress and I also love how the silver heels are a different kind of silver but still work together really nicely. I think they kind of tone themselves down so that the skirt can pop more. And then the layer above the very very shiny silver is also toned down silver. This is beautiful. I really want skirts that can wrap around a pair of pants but still have a big big opening that aren't meant to be worn on their own. Silver shoes, love these Prada ones. See they just kind of pop out and bring themselves out really subtly. Silver belts are beautiful. I love this photo so much. I think this shape of shoe is really beautiful. Again, with the kind of slimmer shoe. I think the Velcro is also a pretty unique touch to them. So these are my Depop likes. I love this Harley Davidson bag. Just the slouchy element. Love the little charms hanging off in the picture. Faith is a brand of vintage pointed toe heel boots that I see a lot on Depop. I love these boots. The way the zipper comes out, the little buckle, and the subdued little bow all around. Just a stunning shoe. These are cute. I'd probably tie a string around them the same way I do with my kitten heels. Love this dress. I can already picture this with slouchy suit pants or slouchy jeans. Another slouchy bag from 2000s. I would love a pair of these shorts. Another beautiful pair of ballet flats. I love the pointed toe. These I'm obsessed with. Another Mayway, dead stock, metallic, slouchy riding boot. These hunter boots. I love hunter rain boots, but having them in silver is just a little bit more elevated and unique to me. My biggest challenge is trying to find sweaters and cardigans that aren't too big on me or don't flatter my body type just because they're way too frumpy. I know that frumpy is in, but for these I always like to stick to something a little bit more form-fitted and lightweight. I've saved a bunch of very unique cardigans and sweaters on Depop that are just easy to wear for me and something that I can also throw on and always look put together. Not only do I like thinner and cropped and more form-fitting, but I love unique elements to them. I love when a sweater will have just a different unexpected part of them that makes them very interesting. So this Atom sweater I really love because it's a combination of sheer and thick and you can wear this in a lot of different ways. You could layer it with maybe something like the silver bra right under it and I think that would be really cool. This one's a bit more frumpy but the fact that you can unzip the front however much you want kind of brings back form and shape from the body and I think that's really great. Classic little cardigan. This one is beautiful because of the off the shoulder and you can play with where it sits. You can make it asymmetrical, something like that. Another beautiful kind of off the shoulder, one that you can play with. This is Diesel. This one's Cop Capine, just very thin and the hood is a really nice touch. I love fully off the shoulder sweaters. This is a Comme des Garçons one that I think is so beautiful because the hem is so beautifully sculptural. Yoji Yamamoto, just another very slinky, soft material. This Versace one's really cool. I love the little piercings all the way down the front. This is very frumpy, but also at the same time, it's not taking away from a silhouette. Next, I'm really into the idea of having a pair of slinky, low-waisted 90s suit pants inspired by 90s minimalism and also grunge. I recently went to an Arctic Monkeys concert and this girl that was walking in in front of me had the perfect low-waisted suit pants paired with a white t-shirt and I think... Oh yeah, she was wearing Prada sneakers and I thought the overall look was so put together, so perfect, and yet it was so simple. So I really just want to go to a thrift store one day and truly, truly work at it and build that collection, just trying on everything that I can. When I go to the thrift store, jeans and 
trousers, like suit trousers are the hardest thing because it's just this gigantic rack and you feel like most of them are just not going to be perfect so you just look at it, I get overwhelmed and I'm just like, I'm just going to look at shirts where I can see the differences up front and I don't have to examine them so intricately and try on as many as possible. These are some 90s minimalism office siren grunge images from Pinterest. Isabella Verona has a really great collection of L trousers which also come with a skirt that is perfectly matched and pairs with it really nicely. Sporty ballet flats are next on the list because they are just another similar silhouette to me as the boxing boots. There's a lot of these beautiful puma ones with lacing that goes all the way up to the ankle and these adidas ones are all over Pinterest with their beautiful big bow on them. I love Miu Miu 1999 for all of their sporty looking flats and ugly shoes in general. These are also really stunning with the ribbons. These are from Camper. They must be vintage but Camper does a lot of new looking ugly shoes. And finally these little juicy couture ones. Finally I really want to incorporate the trend of cheetah print into my wardrobe this year. Everyone is talking about cheetah print but also I find that it's a really nice basic but also elevated texture slash fabric in the same kind of similar way as red and metallic. I think people are referring to it sometimes as a basic even though it is a pattern is because it's subdued. It's just these like darker colors that mesh well with each other. I don't necessarily have a specific kind of piece picked out for cheetah print that I want but these are some images I found on Pinterest where you can pretty much do any piece of your outfit in cheetah print and it could still work out. It would literally be a bag, a boot, pants, tights, a jacket, a shirt, or a hat. Those are all of the pieces that I have on my wish list just due to the fact that they seem like pieces and styles that will transform with me as my style grows because they do hold true that world that I always tend to exist in within fashion and the moments in fashion that have consistently inspired me throughout the years. Thank you so much for watching and I'm excited to put out part two of this video next week right before I post my video for that week. So it'll be a little bonus video. Hope you enjoyed, hope you had a great day and see you next time. Oh,